Giovanni Paola well. is our referee. Donnez la baie. Attention à la tête. Oui. Et oui. OK. Listen, these guys both speak Spanish. I'm not sure what the referee was speaking there. But I think if you don't know what you're doing, at this point, you shouldn't be in the ring. Away we go then, scheduled for eight at Super Lightweight, and it's the European champion in the white with the red trim, Sandal Martin, from the beautiful city of Barcelona, boxing out of that southpaw stance against the grizzled teenager, 19 years old, the Venice-based Nicaraguan. Nestor Maradiaga and one of the questions that I've got for you Alex is you're the European champion you're pushing yourself to the fringes of, of world class why are you having an eight round tick over well you know at this at this point because of the year and the way that things have been um, any action is better than no action especially at this junction in his career a little stumble orthodox and so far I think the feet got tangled up Maradiaga was in a slightly better position. His weight was forward where Sandor's weight was on his back foot. And stumbled, causing a little stumble backwards. Yeah, as I say, not boxed for quite a while now. Yeah. We called his last fight, Nick, from what yeah, I remember. That's right. was, um, Joe Hughes, the Englishman, yeah, yeah. who's got a terrific engine, Joe. Yeah, he's, he's, brilliant. Joe Hughes is one of those what you see is what you get guys. And if you don't he's match it, he'll beat you. Yeah. Uh, Martin handled him pretty comfortably that He really night. did, yeah. yeah. And he's seen, he's seen the uh, seen the fact that Joe functioned mainly with one hand, um, and he, uh, he used that to his advantage. He really did, yeah. yeah he also uh, won the title earlier against Andrea Scarpa. Both those fights in 2019, both in his home city of uh, Barcelona as well, yeah. which really just made it seven wins in a row since that loss to Anthony Zhigit. She did seem to put a bit of a dent there. Not been stopped. The two defeats were both on points. And as I say, the loss against Alexandre Lepele, the Frenchman, came when he was very young indeed, barely out of his teens. But whenever I've seen him, I've liked him. He's, he's, got, yeah. he's, he's, he's a smart ring operator, isn't he? He's one yeah, of those he guys that, yeah. can, that, that can boss the, yeah. you know, the, the tempo. And you can tell that, he's, uh, that he uses his 38 bouts, you know, to his advantage, you know. He's, he's nice and steady. He doesn't really, very rarely punches out of range. Likes to wait till the feet are in a good position. Um, he's a nice counter puncher as well. Likes to whip that that back hand under the under the right rib. He's uh, orthodox opposition. Um, he's a good punch picker as well. And yeah. he, um, he doesn't waste very much. Um, and and we've seen him use uh, good feet work and head movement to his advantage as well. He's he's a good all rounder, you yeah. know. Yeah. Um, he really is. Well, is we... is he? You know, um, is he the, the, the class and the level of guys like Josh Taylor and stuff? Can he cope at that level? Probably not. He's probably fringe world title level, in my opinion. But he's certainly a very good operator, that's for sure. Well, one of the qualities I like about him, and you, you, you ticked off a lot of them, is the fact that he could be such a ring general. I'll go yeah. back to that last fight he had against Joe Hughes. And yeah. Hughes can be a, a tough, tough night's work for anybody. And it was a really easy night for him, wasn't it? That, that impressed me more than he anything. He did make it, made, made it pretty easy. We were actually really quite surprised yeah. how easy he made it. Exactly. Um, and his punch selection was very intelligent as well. And he also never left himself in any situations where Joe could get that left hook off. And I, I think he did a couple of times, but then he just adjusted to that. And he made it work for him very, very well, yeah. I wouldn't say there's a boom in boxing in Spain at the moment, but there's certainly been a revival over the last couple of years, and uh, with Sergio Garcia and other... European champion who's definitely on the fringes of world class, and Sandro Martini, they're leading that charge. That's always what it needs, isn't it? You get two or three guys starting to emerge to serious international level, and that opens up the opportunities for everybody else. And then the other guys in the gym start looking and saying, hey, you know, I can follow these guys. It's going to really open up for them. But as you say, it's a 
tough old division that he's trying to crack. Probably don't, as you say. Could he handle Josh Taylor? Well, let's be honest, not many could at the moment. Another Scotsman. Yeah. What's going on? It's Scots that? everywhere. Yeah, that's it. Like I said, we're taking over the world. is a guy, Josh Taylor, that you do know very well. I mean, you know, virtually yeah. the same hometown. You've known him since you were a little kid, don't you, haven't you? Sure have, yeah. I am the one that is responsible for making him put on some boxing gloves. Um, I take full responsibility for that. He was irritating me one day in my training camp when he came to visit, and um, I made him put on some gloves and punch the bag, and he's never taken them off since. Yeah. And now he's ruling the world at 140 pounds. And going around saying, Alex who? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure he isn't. I'm quite sure he remembers a lot of the beatings that I gave him when he was coming up as well. Hopefully they helped him. <laughs> I wouldn't be so keen to jump in the ring with him now. I'm sure he would return them tenfold. <laughs> Well, here, Nestor Maradiaga, we've seen him before. We like what he brings, but uh, he is not at Sandal Martin's level, and this uh, looks like a survival exercise for him. And he's always one of those guys that will come and have a go, but I don't think he wants to leave himself too open to uh, a good counter-punching southpaw like Sandal Martin. Although Martin can't really get the counter-punches going here because... Mario yep. Diaga is sitting back and saying, well, I'm not taking any risks exactly. with you. He's not, um, he's not, he's, so he's trying his best not to leave himself in a position where Martin can maybe catch him with something heavy. He, th he, sh he shipped a body shot in the first round and... I don't think you like the, you no. don't think you like the feeling of it. So he's decided to box really cautiously. You know, in the past, like, we've, we've seen him have a go, haven't we? But he's um, certainly not having a go tonight. He does really look like he's... Uh, trying to evade any painful ones going under the, the elbows and then saying that you know he's um, is probably more dangerous than not having a go um, well it is target practice for Martin yeah. he's, oh, just no, gonna, yeah. he's just going to try and pick the holes in the yeah. uh, in the teenagers defences yeah. hasn't he and uh, he's done a very efficient job of doing just that through these first two rounds yeah. very circumspect here Mario Diago yeah Yeah, had things pretty much his own way. Lovely slipping in the uh, left hook there around the back of the guard, Martin. And he always fires back, Maradiaga. He's not one of those that'll just try and get himself into a shell. There's always something coming back. One of the reasons why he's getting such a lot of work. He's a he's a he's a good trial horse. Yeah, yeah. He knows how to survive. And he knows how to cause a few problems for people as well. We talked about this last time we saw him as well. He left his home at the age of 18. Took himself halfway around the world, wow. based himself in Italy. Now, you have to have an awful lot of mental toughness and self-belief. Either that, or you must be absolutely desperate. Yeah, either that, yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, I mean, uh, well, but whatever, you'll grow up and toughen up very fast. Yeah. You're living on oh, your own yeah. in, a, in a country where, you know, you're a Spanish speaker in Italy. How tough was it where he came from, though? Exactly, yeah. Like, you know, yeah. it might be luxury where he is now compared to what he grew yeah. up. Either way, it was a brave by. move to yeah. do that at the age of 18. Certainly. And that shows that you've got a lot of strength of character. Okay. He got away with one there. Mario Yaga. The counter didn't come. You can see Martin was looking to land it. And I think a sharper sandal Martin would have landed a decent counter there. Mario wants to be careful leading off here. Nice sharp counter punching again there, isn't it, from Martin? Yes. And not counter it just with one shot, he's counter it in combination, which is uh, it's not not easy to do. Um, it doesn't really matter the level of the opposition, it's very tricky to counter in combination. You know, your classic Southpaw examples of um, counter punching, it's normally a nice, neat, well delivered single, but when you've got a guy who's throwing three and four counter punches when he's making his opponent miss, it's always nice to see. Reminds me a little bit of. 
Sugar Ray Leonard and guys like that who make you miss and they hit you with three or four shots, not just not just the one, Roy Jones, these kind of guys. And I think Martin realised quite early in his career that that's what he's going to have to do because he's not a yeah. natural power puncher and his, no. his record reflects that as yeah. well. But he does get he does get a little bit, you know, weight on his shots and he's he's quite a spiteful puncher. Um, although we wouldn't call him it necessarily heavy handed. Yeah, he's a wear you down yeah, guy rather than yeah, a spark you out yeah, guy, isn't he? Yeah, you wouldn't um, you know, you wouldn't think he's gonna land one heavy shot that's gonna totally take the opposition out, but he's um, he always looks like he, he digs with a little bit of purpose, a little bit of authority. Yes. Nice right hand. Um, he he's struggling with the speed here, Mariaga, as much as anything. Yeah, the punch Martin, picking as well. Yeah, Martin has just picked up the tempo significantly here in this third round. The fact that he might be able to slip and slide away for one or two, maybe even just one of those counter punches. You know, the other ones are going to follow up and they're going to hit something. I tell you, he, his jab has lost any authority that it ever had. He's just pouring it out. Yeah. Speculatively now, Maradiaga. Yeah, he catches it really quite well, Sander Martin as well, on his on his front hand. As you see there, he catches it on his front hand and he looks to the turn straight away. So what he's trying to do here, Nick, is he's trying to take away Maradiaga's jab, essentially, and leave him with very, very, very little offence. Uh, if that was the aim in this third round, I would say it's job done. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's tactically very smart boxing. Yeah. Just got the feeling there. Sandra Martin goes back to his corner that uh, Maradiaga started to lose a lot of self-belief in that last round. Does he hang it out? You know, does he hang it out? Or, you know, this continues in this fashion to the corner eventually say, OK, probably enough there now, buddy. Took a little bit too much stick. That's good punch setups as well. Leads in with the left hand before coming with the right hand behind his right shoulder. It's quite smart tactically. Smart punch pick in, yeah. And as we saw there, just in that little exchange, Mariaga's range has, has completely dropped off the radar now. Round four then, it's scheduled for eight. Sandor Martin in the white with the red trim, European champion, and looking like a European champion at the moment against the uh, very game teenager, Nestor Maradiaga. There are a lot of Nicaraguan boxers who've shipped up in Europe, but most of them have gone, ironically enough, around the, the Barcelona area. But this fella has uh, settled in Venice instead. Again, he just can't get anywhere near him. He keeps trying to land these hooks, and they're, they're not close. I mean, they're missing by miles. Yeah, they're way off the target, aren't they? Hey, I've looked to uh, switch to the body there and had a little bit of success, Maradiaga. At least it landed. Nice again from Martin. Yeah, those are the ones that get you, aren't they? Is that right hand that finished that exchange? He just wasn't expecting it, Mariaga. Always he comes out looking stronger out of these exchanges, Martin. Yeah, he sure does, yeah. He's now just stepping across Maradiaga as well. He's not having to follow him around the ring, trying to draw a lead. He's just stepping across him now. Oh, sharp jab there. Stunning jab. Maradiaga tries the right hand. He knows he's not having much success with the left hand now. Martin still not throwing caution to the wind. Still going about this rather cagely. Yeah, nothing cagey shot. about that. Yeah, that's a good shot there. Yeah, the backhand coming yeah. into play. He does leave yeah. himself open with these wide, crude hooks. Basically, Maradiaga. basically caught Maradiaga on the move as he turned away. Probably thought he was um, in the clear and on his way out of range without being in any trouble. But 
Martin just planted that back foot and dropped that cross in as he as Mara Diaga walked away and uh, landed it lovely and flush. But as you mentioned earlier, Nick, you know, there's no um, sign of you know him being a destructive puncher where he, you know, Mara Diaga shakes and he just can't take the power off. You know, he's still absorbing these pretty well. But will he continue to? It is very one-sided, but uh, not so one-sided that you think, oh, hello, the corner's got a decision to make or the referee no, can help no, us out. No, no, not quite yet. No. Oh, we're not at that level. No, we're not at that level, Nick. No, we're nowhere near that. And it's coming up to round five now, so... Yeah, it's another round where that's the one you were talking about, Alex. That left hand where Mariaga probably thought, "Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm safely out of range here." And he was, he was well yeah, in range. Yeah, yeah, it was well in range. I think, Alex, this fight boils down to what does Sandor Martin want out of it? If he yeah. just wants rounds, we're going to see another four yeah, rounds we like should the previous are. four. We should are, but yeah. if he does want to just say, right, okay, let's see if I can get the stoppage, and this is my yeah, debut right. under the matchroom promotional banner, and I just want to let everybody know, hey, I'm, I mean business here. We should see him start to step it up now and try and get the stoppage, but yeah. only he knows what he wants. Very, very little coming back in terms of quality from Aaron Diaga. Yeah, drew him in, didn't he? Martin. I said, here you go. This is called counter punching. He's been caught in this awkward position, hasn't he? Yeah, really he all has. Fight. He, 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 has, if he, yeah. he knows if he commits, he's going to get stuck. He's going to get caught. Yeah. So, and he's sort of half-hearted with it, full short. That was a nice body shot there. Like, there's another one of those body shots again. Yeah, he's going to. Yeah, you're right. You know, if he uh, if he overcommits, he's going to maybe take one of those nasty uppercuts to the solar plexus. <laughs> Or the liver. Um, and if he um, does just overreach with the jab, he's going to get hit with two or three counters. So, you know, he is um, he is taking a cautious approach compared to what we've seen before. Yeah, just like that. There's the lead. And, uh, yeah. It misses. And just look what comes back. A three punch combination. So and good was, stiff left cross yeah, to the chest as really well. really was. Yeah, he's, he's, he's really. So, landing some solid backhands into the chest area. Yeah, he sure is, yeah. Marty. Yeah, tries to scoop that uppercut through the guard there with his backhand after a right hook. So he's trying things as well. He is, Sandor Martin. He's, he's trying some stuff out here, Nick, just to see if it works for him. There's that pet punch he has again. I tell you, this crude swinging backhand lead of Mariaga, it, it's just not working at all. No. He, he, needs to, he needs to rein that in. But he, as you say, his jab has just vanished now. Yeah. Martin's yeah. taken it away. He's taken it away. He certainly has. No, that is. Yeah. That's just sort of pouring out, really. Yeah. And, and it's a kind of get away. It's a kind of get yeah. away from go the jab. Away, leave me alone. Away, yeah. yeah. Yeah, 
y cuando lo consigas coger, porque lo estás cogiendo, pero no te quieres agachar, ¿de acuerdo? ¿Eh? Te tienes que agachar un poquito, ¿de acuerdo? Porque si no, queda muy alto. Well, more of the same really in that round. Every time Maradiaga made any kind of move at all, Martin was on him, and uh, if Maradiaga just decided to wait for Martin, Martin would just yeah. pick his moment. Yeah, just pick him off, yeah, at will really as well. Empieza el 6, Andor. He's got a lot of miles on the clock for a 19-year-old, hasn't yeah, he? Yeah, he sure really is. Has. It's unbelievable, yeah. really. Oh, nice sharp left hand there to start this round off from Martin. Come out with a little bit more energy than we've seen before, Sandor Martin. I wonder if he is looking to see if he can just get the finish done here. The tempo noticeably up. side of the jab, something else he's added into the, the repertoire. I don't think you can get as obvious those continuous big heavy left leads down the middle. Maradiaga is a little bit too KJ and accomplished for that. Despite his 17 or so bouts, you know, he's, um, this guy knows how to carry himself now for a 19 well, year old. This is why he's getting thrown yeah. with European champions. Yeah, he knows how to survive. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Ooh, low one. Low 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 one. one. I wonder Wee if that was, south of the border. Yeah, and I wonder if that was Mario Diaga saying, I've had enough of this, I'm yeah. drunk, I don't want in here. Yeah, and then, I'll, get and then I'll be profuse break. with the apologies, but yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Martin yeah. is uh, the fellow that should be yeah. <laughs> bought some time, but I think he's bought himself yeah. some time there. It looked like it was on the top of the thigh. <laughs> yeah. Well, at least Not it wasn't south of the equator. Yeah, it was, it was, it was somewhere in Antarctica where that yeah. one landed. Yeah. The Sandor's trucks are pretty high, though. Yeah, well, I think uh, we can uh, differentiate that. between a low blow and that. And um, that certainly was around the thigh area. Such a big jump up, you know, European champions at world yeah, level. It, yeah. it, it, it's not an easy step, is it? Yeah, no, certainly it not. Really, no. you, know, you, you know, just because you're a European champion, that doesn't mean you're prime ready yeah. to, to join the elite. Yeah, I mean, it certainly means that you can probably challenge them or it'll put you in a position, that, you know, that you can take them on. Can you beat them, though, is, uh, is a whole other ball game. Oh, that's a good body shot there, a whipping right hook. But yeah, um, it's a really tough weight class as well. Ooh, right lovely. now, that's another lovely good body, body shot. shot. Yeah, he's picked oh. them well now. He realised he had success with that first right hook to the body and he's tried it again. Maradiaga's um, maybe started to get the elbow down for that left uppercut to the body. Oh. So the right, he switched to the right and that's a success. He looked a bit weary there. It was ruled a slip, but uh, he looked very, very weary, the youngster. Quite sure the corner are probably going to tell him to get that left elbow tucked in now. He's not enjoying his night, is he? It's not, no, he's not. No, definitely not. In fact, he's probably not for the first round yet, but still, it's getting a lot bit worse for him now. Yeah, that really was more of the same. Yeah, but if we'll see that first right hook to the body. There's one there, that's the first one I believe, that was a sore one. Well, Sandal Martin bossing the first six rounds, just one more to go after this. As you say, Josh Taylor and uh, Jose Carlos Ramirez are the uh, the elite level fighters. 
So you're looking at where does he go from here, Sandor Martin? And one guy whose name that always jumps out at me would be someone like Victor Pastor. Yeah. Just so close to world level in yeah. order being a world champion himself. A and, serious yeah. test for anybody. And in my opinion, still as a level or two above Sandor Martin. Yep. So that gives you a rough idea into the the light welterweight or super lightweight weight class whatever you decide to class it just program Maurice Rooker even Baranchik I say a Peter there's a there's a lot of talent there and in those rankings you'll see names still like Anthony Zigit who beat this fella so it's going to be a a tough passage for him, whichever way he goes. He's got a WBA ranking of 10. Sandor Martin, so that's I think he's maybe 8 with a WBC as well. I think now, he, uh, he does have a high WBC ranking, you're right. There's a good body shot there with a left uppercut again. First time he's had success with that for a few, a few rounds. So I think the the mission was to get round here, Nick. And practice some things, which he's certainly done. And he has looked good doing it. But the big question is, will he be sending shockwaves or fear through the very, very strong 140 pound yeah. weight division? I probably think he's not. I wouldn't have thought the Maurice Hookers and the Regis Prograys and the Victor Postols of this world are looking at this and going, oh boy, I no. steer clear of this guy. No, I don't think they are. But then again, you, you can't judge him on this performance. No, I mean, yeah, it, no, of course you can't. No, you can't. He wants rounds and he's getting rounds. This is what he's doing. But then what you do have to think about is you stick any of the names that you just mentioned, Nick, in with Mara Diaga and what would the likely outcome be? Even if they were looking for rounds, would they get the rounds? Mm. You would have to think that the rounds probably wouldn't creep up to eight, would yes, you? Yes, I think you're right. Yeah. He does look tired, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. he really does. That's a sore body yeah, shot as well. Yeah, another big one oh, yeah. right on the bell here. Yeah. Martin is really unloading. Landed right and left to the body there. Yeah. And went upstairs. I don't know why he's waiting, though. Oh, he's waiting for the bell. Yeah. It looks like he is trying to get rounds because... Any of the four names we mentioned yeah. got someone in that situation. I'm it's sure they let the old hands go. It's yeah, over. it's over. <laughs> no, he's happy. He just wants to, as you say, try a few things, shake off the rust, yeah. get some rounds under his belt. Yeah. And that's what he's doing. And they found an opponent who is good enough and willing enough to stay with him. Looks like it. be so discouraging for him every time Maudiaga lands anything something is straight back at him always answered whenever Maudiaga has uh, tagged him and there was a moment there late where he just wondered if Martin might have stepped it up but he, I think he did know there were literally a few seconds left he probably heard the rap on the canvas and said nah let's take this into a last round and that's where we are round eight So the only question is, Alex, does he decide just to really put his foot down here and try and get him out of there, or does he just take a clean sweep on the cards? I think I know the answer. Yeah, I think uh, the latter is probably more likely, Nick, isn't it? He uh, doesn't look like he's in, a, in any desperate rush to get Mara Diaga out there. Lunges forward with the head, it's a little caution. Would it just be awful for Sander Martin to pick up a cup? In the very last round, after such a clinical, one-sided performance, yet Martiaga wasn't that far away there with the head. Oh, nice punch back in again. Sharp yeah. two punch yeah. combination there, and the left hand really stinging Martiaga. We've got two minutes left in this one, yeah. and the stoppage is not out the realms of possibility here because he's looking really tired. And I think that lunge with the head was a sign of tiredness, a dead giveaway. <laughs> Yeah, 
Martin just looking to measure him up here. It's right hand to the body. Follow up with that left hook to the body as well. That combination to the body has yeah. been very effective for him in the second half of this bit, fight. A little bit deliberate though, Nick, isn't it? It's um, not a great deal of thought there or punch variety. You know, there wasn't a couple of shots to try and open Maradiaga's defences up before he switched to the body. It was just very direct, straight to the body. And any good, tough pro, especially a good journeyman pro who knows how to survive, will take those all day. You need to find a way to open them up. Give them something to think about prior to throwing those big body shots. Otherwise, they'll just tuck up nice and tight. See them coming a mile off. You know, and that is not the kind of thing that the other guys in this weight class would do. They would, they would find those openings by working inside there. They wouldn't go straight to the mark. We're inside the final minute here. And what has been a very, very one-sided... Well, it's, it's been an exhibition, really, hasn't it? Yeah, it sure has. Renta, Sando. Go. Yeah, Maradiaga. Showing that he's only eight, 19 years old, but he's learned an awful lot of survival tricks. There was the low blow, there was the lunge in with the head, and now he's just holding and tying up. He's going to have a good long career, this fella. Sure is. Yeah. He, he knows a lot of the old pros tricks at a very, very tender age. <laughs> I was just about to say, the man is a child. He's a child. He's, yeah, There's exactly. a long time to go. He's a baby. That'll do it. Yeah. Well, if he wanted a rounds, rounds he's got. And if you want a job as a scoring judge, this is the fight for you because it's easy. This shouldn't take long. So Sandor Martin bounces back, gets his first fight out of the way under his new promotional banner. And he is the score. A unanimous decision, the winner from Barcelona, Sandor Martin. Well, they didn't announce any numbers, but I think it's safe to say anybody watching this would have had this one pretty comfortable. 80-72. Crossed every round, dominated every round.